Hey everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome back to another video from me. This week, I thought I would sit down and do a little q and I I have collated quite a few questions from my Instagram account, my TikTok account, and I've also had a few questions from you guys some of my subscribers and I thought it would be nice to actually sit down and talk you through these questions rather than just try and answer them in one sentence. So I'm going to dive right in because currently my little boy is napping and I'm hoping that he will allow me to get through this. My little girl has started daycare so it means I have some extra time which is so nice and I really want to just be continuing with these videos and basically trying to get them more regularly. I know they are helping a lot but I also do like to keep them very realistic and I feel like these questions will hopefully help with some of that as well. So diving straight into the first question, is there anything different to what you expected? So yes, absolutely. Number one, believe it or not, is the weather. So obviously we are in New South Wales and I know it can be very different in each state. However, for me, I didn't expect the weather to be so changeable is probably the right word. Obviously, yes, it gets very hot here and it does get very extreme. Just at the weekend, we actually hit 43 degrees, um, which if I'm being honest, it is unbearable, especially with two kids. For example, getting in the car, I honestly gave myself third degree burns because the leather seat and obviously you're in shorts or a dress. My steering wheel was roasting hot. I have one of those sunshades, but it just does not keep the heat out of the car. So yeah, obviously it's very extreme. Um, my perfect temperature is kind of mid twenties. It lets you get out and just really enjoy your day. However, the flip side to that is that it also can get very rainy. And I know someone had let me know this in the comments before. I think it was when I was talking about why people would want to have a tumble dryer here. And today I am hating the fact that I don't have a tumble dryer. My washing pile is so high because for the last two days it has rained. And when I say rain, I mean like it, oh my goodness, it comes down at some rate. And the thunder, the lightning, it's so extreme. However, I will caveat that by saying that it does only last a couple of days and then the weather is back to being nice and clear and to be honest that's all I really ask for. I'm not asking for direct heat all the time but you know just to have a nice warm day, no rain, it's just so nice and it's so livable here. But yeah it's something that I definitely didn't expect. Obviously when we arrived as well, I think we arrived in autumn, um, more so moving into winter but it got very cold obviously the houses here are not built to keep the heat in they're built to get the heat out so when it comes to the kind of cooler seasons it does get very cold and one of the things I wish I had brought over was I'm going to say house coat and I think people would probably call it dressing gown but I get very cold at night and in the morning so yeah I would definitely say the extreme weathers I kind of was led to believe that it was just hot all year round um, and although the weather is lovely it's actually quite nice to have it different you know those days where it's overcast and it's maybe like 23 you're so grateful for it because you can get things done and you can get out and about and then it's always maybe a few days later it'll get really hot and by that point you're ready to go and enjoy it and you don't feel like you've got a list of things that you're trying to do in this extreme heat all the time. So although it was very unexpected, it's actually quite nice that it's different all the time. Second one is working hours. So I can't really talk on me because currently I don't work. But being over here with Ewan, I feel like it's definitely a different work, work culture here than the UK. So for example, Ewan works in the construction industry and again, it's probably different from potentially those that work in an office environment, but his hours, he is away for 11 hours every day. And for me being on my own with the two kids, I find this extremely difficult, especially not having any help at breakfast or dinner time. I mean, if I could pick any, it would definitely be dinner time when everyone's just exhausted, 
the kids are just tough and you're trying to do it all on your own it's very hard but when we were in talks about coming over the contract was always explained that it would be a 30 hour contract and I do appreciate that construction industry never goes that way but um, it's almost like his hours are just expected that every day they work these kind of two to three hours more than what their contract is and also he works weekends as well and again coming from the UK it was very he, he, I don't think he ever worked the weekends um, because they're very against it I would say the UK has more of a work life balance and, and what I mean by that is that they they don't like you to work extra especially in construction especially in that industry it's kind of frowned upon um, whereas here I definitely feel that he works he works more hours here and we did talk about this I will link it below if there are males watching this video and are keen to know his perspective on it we done a video on this and yeah Ewan kind of opened up about that and the different hours than what he was used to in the UK. So I'll link this video, um, just click above and you can watch that if you want. However, yeah, that definitely, I feel like that's something that was a big shock to me. And also when we arrived, Ewan was working literally a week after we arrived. Um, it's just been tough, it's been tough. And I feel like Ewan's work has made things tougher for us both, not just for me. Um, I know it was a big shock to Ewan as well. So that's something that, yeah, we definitely, both of us got quite a fright about. Um, and one of the things that are making it quite tough. Number three, probably quite a funny one, but something that I did not expect was the toilets. So toilets, when you go into cafes back home, it's almost, it probably is a law, in fact, that you have to have a toilet um, with any place that's serving food or coffee, there has to be a toilet in that building. And that's not necessarily the case here. Now, I will again caveat that by saying I've never been in a situation where I haven't been able to get a toilet. However, you tend to find that a lot of cafes here will hand you this key and tell you the toilet is maybe two or three buildings down the road or next door or they share it with another facility and it's just something that is quite different from the UK. Now for me, being a mum of two, this can be quite difficult. You can't even leave your food, you've got to uproot everyone to then go to this toilet and then come back and just hope that your table's there, you know? Do you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a bit different. Um, however, like I say, we haven't ever been in a situation where we haven't had access to a toilet. And the public toilets here are so nice. Again, I've only been in a handful that haven't been very clean. Majority of them are super clean and especially the ones by the beach. I was really shocked at how clean and tidy those were. Again, talking from back home, any public toilet that's outdoors, you just avoid. So here, yeah, it's very nice that they're super clean and well maintained. And then finally, I think the only other thing that I can think of at this time that I didn't expect was quite a sad one actually, but how lonely um, I would feel. I definitely feel a whole sense of loneliness that I've never really felt before. Um, and that probably has to do with Ewan's long hours, um, being on my own with the kids all the time and just not really making any connections as of yet. And obviously we have been here almost a year, but we have moved four times now. So we've never really been in a place long enough to secure those like long-term friendships. I think where we are should open up those doors because we do have a lot of families here. There's a big community. There's lots of things that go on in terms of kids clubs. There's even like little hobbies. Um, if you have a hobby, you can go to a lot of different like clubs and things at night, there's lots of gyms, there's just a lot going on and I think we will have more of an opportunity here to make those friends but we have only been in the central coast now for just three weeks so it's really not that long. However in terms of loneliness, yeah it's definitely something that I'd probably tell people if they were coming over just to expect that. The hardest thing for me is that when I am feeling those tough days, family back home are asleep in the middle of the night for them. So I tend to just have to really get on with it. My kind of like help with that, if you like, is to get out the house. I usually just go down to the park with the kids or put a podcast in. 
um, just really try and remind myself why I moved here in the first place and it does help, it definitely helps to get out but yeah it's just it's a hard thing to really go through because you're so used to having your friends, your family and even just like familiarity around you know so when you're here it almost feels like you know when you're just feeling that kind of low way everything just intensifies so you feel like why have I moved here you know why I've done this to myself why do I really feel this low but then you have to remind yourself that you you're out your comfort zone so things are going to be hard of course they are and you just have to get through that stage so I can definitely say that although I feel lonely I feel much better now than I did at the beginning of a journey and that's something that I would say to people yes expect it but just try and get through it put things in place I know for me as well this is actually one that I would give as a tip to people but TikTok and Instagram are actually very good for connecting with other people not necessarily in your direct area but connecting with people who are on the same journey and I've actually met a few girls online that are in different states but they're going through the same journey so they've felt the same feelings or they are feeling the same as how you are and it just helps to have kind of messages back and forth and obviously they are available when family back home is not so that's also a really good thing to do again YouTube's fab you can just go on and watch other people's videos and yeah you just then feel like okay this is normal what I'm going through and things will get better it just takes time the next question is another Instagram one hey Kim can I ask how long did it take you until you felt confident driving in the roads over there okay so um, one of my very first videos actually I think I caught on camera um, one in fact I think it was my first was it my first yeah I think it was my first journey basically in the car and I was super nervous which is funny because we drive on the same side of the road here but I feel like that's about it that's about the only thing that is similar um, because for a start coming from Scotland all of our roads apart from maybe your motorways were just one road going that way and one coming that way there was very rarely lots of like traffic going at the one time I, I would consider myself a confident driver but when it comes to the road signs and the traffic lights those are all very different from the UK similar in the same that's red amber green but green doesn't necessarily always mean that you can go if there is people crossing you have to be wary of that and then obviously you've got your filter lights you've got a lot more signs here that for example my sat nav may tell me to turn right and then there's a big sign in front of me that says no right turn so you just have to be very wary and obviously again I basically had to retrain myself whilst I was living in the city centre of Sydney so I mean it doesn't get much worse than that does it literally I was panicking every time I went out whereas again here in the central coast it's I feel a lot calmer here there's a lot more roads that are similar to what I know in Scotland um, and people are just much nicer here they have patience they will let you in they will say thank you do not expect any of that in Sydney people just do not have any manners in Sydney will peep at you all the time are going so fast all the time and always in a rush and yeah things like that make it really scary but all I would say is that again now I can jump in the car and go anywhere those things do pass the best thing you can do is actually just go out um, I think one of the things I probably would have done is maybe go out at night obviously it's a bit harder when you have kids but you know when the roads are maybe just a little bit quieter and just familiarise yourself with the traffic light system and the different signs one of the, the things I really struggle with here are the road signs I feel like the they don't make sense <laughs> they really don't make sense one of the ones i struggle with the most is the word accepted now that's e x c not a double c so it will say things like buses accepted and my brain cannot process that when i'm traveling at 60 kilometers an hour and i'm trying to figure out if i should be in that lane or not my brain just goes no nope, thank you don't know what that means so yeah that happens a lot you get a lot of the accepted or for example parking oh my goodness parking confuses me so much here basically majority of parking is either parallel on the streets or obviously you've got your little areas parking zones um but the ones that are parallel they always have signs that will say like one 
one, two or, or three or whatever, um, which means you can park here for one hour or two hours um, and that's fine. But then underneath it, it will say something like, but not on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, not between the hours of 4am and 12pm. <laughs> like it's just, you literally are like, can I park here or not? I just need a yes or no answer. That's it. So again, those, the amount of times that I've drove into a space and I look at the sign for a good 12 minutes and then I just reverse back out because I just don't know if I can park there or not. That's the only thing I would say is very, very confusing. And I know a lot of people who have had a parking ticket, um, they are hefty fines. So yeah, basically for me, if I don't understand it, I just don't park there. But in terms of actually driving, yes, it's fine. The only thing I'm still struggling with to this day is the window wipers and the indicators. They've flipped over from what I know in the UK. So people tend to peep at me because I've not indicated when actually my wipers are going so fast and I'm getting flustered. <laughs> I'm trying to apologise because in my head I have indicated, but my wipers are going 100 miles an hour and there's no rain, so I'm just panicking. So I'm still struggling with that. Obviously, with the rain being on the now, it's, a, it's making me confused even more because I'm having to use my wipers. So then my indicators go and then people peep because I'm indicating to the left. I'm not, I'm going straight ahead and yeah, you can see how hard it is. So my next question was a comment on TikTok asking if there was anything that I regret not bringing over from the UK. And I'm quite simply going to answer that by saying yes, and that is my cat. I have shed many tears over this um, and she is with family. She is in the best home that she could possibly be in, but it really, really kills me to talk about her because I I got Minnie myself um, and she was my first pet and she was my first baby that I went and literally got myself and brought home to the first flat that me and Ewan got together and I remember Ewan being dead against it and then I appeared with her as you do and he totally fell in love with her and we had her for seven years. She basically went through everything with us from moving house to then having a tough time with miscarriage and then having two beautiful kids. She got to meet them and just it just kill, kills me to this day that she's not with us. Um, obviously there, it's a huge journey and everyone has to make decisions based on how they feel at the time um, and I strongly feel that many may potentially not have made it over here. She's a very tiny cat and gets very stressed easily um, being anywhere other than our house so we had to make that decision and it was very tough and there's days here where I just really miss her. I feel like if you've not had a pet you won't understand but yeah that's probably one of my biggest I don't even know if I can say the word regret because even if somebody could, you know, ship her over to me just now, it's something I would really have to think about because I just don't, I truly don't think that she would make it. But it's something that I would definitely tell people to just take time and think about. You know, maybe even potentially like leaving them with a family member until you feel settled enough to really make that decision. But it's a, it's a really hard one. I think dogs are definitely different, but she is having the best time um, and I'm so lucky that we do get to check on an hour. Currently I still can't even see her on like FaceTime calls because it just, it kills me. It really, really kills me. Um, and I'm going to move on now because I'm feeling myself getting upset. <clears throat> so the next thing that I definitely regret not bring, bringing over, warmer clothes is definitely one. Um, and again, not for right now, but those months where it does just get a little bit cooler. The fashion here is definitely different to the UK and it is one of the things I miss a lot. I actually ended up giving away a lot of my clothes, friends, family and also charity shops. But do you know what? I really wish that I brought quite a lot of them over. A lot of them that I think about in my head, I actually packed away not even having a second thought about because I genuinely thought I'm never ever going to need them over there. So there's not even any point in questioning it. Whereas now, yeah, there's a lot of things that I'm like, I would love to wear that today or I should have just kept that. And when I go shopping here, I just really can't find a fashion that mirrors what I had in the UK. 
here is very very laid back shorts and t-shirts are just kind of worn by everyone one of the things that i definitely love here is that there is no like brand you know like you don't see anyone really wearing brands i think the the one that i see the most is like is it billable i don't even know if i'm saying that right um possibly because where we are is a very like big surfing community but you really really do not have to worry about feeling like you're wearing a certain brand it's just not materialistic here whatsoever and it's one of the things i genuinely do love but when fashion is your identity it's really hard to go somewhere and wear things that you're really not that comfortable in and don't get me wrong during the week i do love just you know having shorts and t-shirt on it's so much easier with the warmer weather but when it does start to cool down i really really miss getting ready in the morning and enjoying my outfit. I'm a huge kind of fashion lover and especially when it comes to my style, it's not your leggings, thick salt, baggy jumpers and I just do struggle a little bit here. So I wish I'd brought a lot of my clothes over. Kmart just doesn't do it for me when it comes to that kind of fashion. Now again, if you are new to my channel, then we actually moved over here. We sold our house in the UK and we came over purely with four large Sports Direct bags um, and our hand luggage. And that was literally it. I don't know how we've done it to this day, but we sold everything. We didn't bring any container over whatsoever. Now we would have, however, due to us coming over quite soon after COVID started to move away, um, there was a lot of backlogs and the company that we had our coat from had advised that the container would be with us in approximately six to nine months. And it just didn't seem reasonable enough for us to do that. Um, a lot of the things we would have shipped over, we would have needed straight away. So yeah, that... It, became not an option for us. Not only that, it's very expensive. I would advise to have a look into it first of all. Really think about what you need to bring over rather than just what you are looking or wanting to bring over and get some quotes on it because the, yeah, it is very, very expensive. And if you can manage in four bags, then that's amazing. And we managed to buy a lot of things and we came over here from Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is fab here. Because you tend to find a lot of places are rentals and a lot of people are moving out and moving in, there's a lot of things that are always going up for sale. And one of the other things that I have spoke about before is everyone leaving things at the bottom of their driveway or their house, which is for usually for a council pickup, but obviously it's then free to the public. And I've drove by quite a few bundles that look amazing, almost brand new things. People usually having a clear out or moving out so yeah you, you can do things a lot cheaper than just buying everything new when you come over here and I mean I'm even looking around my house at the moment and a lot of the things that I can actually see we, we bought on Marketplace so again that's something I would definitely advise doing I mean thinking of the things that we sold from our house and gave away did not equate to what they were actually worth so yeah we literally were starting with very little so it it helps to obviously have yeah, help from either marketplace or um, sales, etc. So my next question is one that I received on YouTube. It's actually one that I had responded to to say, I'm going to do a video on this. It says, hey Kim, thank you so much for all the realistic content. Do you mind me asking if you have any advice on breaking the news to family members? I'm worried my mum will take it very badly and the guilt will just be too much for me. So yes, this is a, one of the questions I do get asked quite a lot and I have sent various voice messages to people and tried to reply in the best way that I can. Obviously every situation is different but I think when it comes down to announcing to family that you're moving to the other side of the world, is there really any easy way to do that? Um, no, not really, other than just pulling out all the positives of why you're doing it in the first place. I had two very different kind of situations. My mum was very positive on it, something that she had wished that she had done when she was younger. So she was very positive on it. She thought it was great. And she was always really good for when I was having a bit of a tough day or maybe some regrets or 
cold feet, she would always kind of push me in the direction of you have to do this, you know, home will always be here, you have to go and see the world and yeah, we'll always be here. Then I had my dad who I am very close with and yeah, we have we have a, a, real, a nice relationship and he, I would see my dad twice a week minimum and I really panicked about telling my dad, I felt really ill over it. And I tried to just <laughs> introduce it into conversations. And at one point he had said to me he had the opportunity when he was younger. Um, and he was quite positive about it. And then I let him know that Ewan had been offered this opportunity that I think people were going to try. And that was kind of the best thing that I ever done was said that we are going to try it. We're going to try it for a couple of years and see how it goes. And to this day, I still agree with that. But I think instead of saying, we are going and we are never coming back. I think it's easier to let family members know that there, there's still a possibility of you potentially coming back to the UK. But then by the time you've moved and they actually see how well you're doing and they see how happy you are, they see how happy the kids are, their kind of view on it will start to change as well. Whereas obviously when you are there with them, telling them that information, just it's hard for both of you and I don't really understand how any of that can be easy, especially when there's grandchildren involved as well. So yeah, with, with my dad, the way it went is we basically never really spoke about it at all until the month of us booking our flights. And yeah, like it wasn't, I'm not gonna say my dad took it, took it well. I mean, he was always positive, but I know deep inside he was really upset about it. And then eventually, yeah, we just, as things started progressing, our house went up for sale. He obviously came to terms with the fact that it was happening. And then our leaving day was just the hardest day of my life. <laughs> and I actually said to all our family members, I don't want anyone coming to the airport. I am a mum, I have to be strong for the kids. And we are not leaving <laughs> with tears everywhere. And you know, the kids wondering what's going on. So. We had our day, um, our leaving day, the day before we left, and my in-laws very kindly drove us to the airport. I didn't want, you know, big goodbyes again. It was a very hard time for everyone involved. Um, and it was honestly the best thing we ever done. We even considered staying at the airport hotel the night before so that we all just felt fresh in the morning, got up and went. However, I'm glad we decided to do it the way we did. Um, it was very good and it meant that we could just get out of the car and just get straight to the check-in desk and just keep going, keep going and not really have time to, you know, think about those goodbyes because they are hard. And to see if I'm being completely honest, when we arrived in Australia, we were on the phone straight away. I mean, it really, it's a different world now to what I think my dad probably envisioned in his head that he would have to write us a letter in six months months time and you know he would never hear from us whereas the reality of it is I actually speak to my dad probably more now I send him pictures every day we have FaceTime calls he loves it he misses us a lot as does my mum um, all our family does we know that but it's super exciting when they book flights to come over and you get to plan all that time with them I really hope this is helping it's, it's a really hard thing to go through the best advice is just to really yeah, just really promote why you're doing it. Obviously, it's a better, you're not doing it for you, you're doing it for your kids. Well, we were anyway. Better future for them, better opportunities, much better lifestyle, weather is incredible and you're outdoors a lot more. And probably above all of that, just reassure them that you are going to give it a try. Um, things might not work out and you will come home, but you think that it's a, it's a good, positive thing to try. Worst case, you go home, and everything just continues where it left off. And then best case, you make this amazing life and your family get to see how happy you are, how happy your kids are, and they get to come out and enjoy it with you. So yeah, um, best of luck if anyone's going through that just now. Please feel free to give me a message at any time. I still have days where I cry, miss my dad, miss my mum, and that's normal. It's always gonna be normal. They're no longer just along the road, but they are also just a FaceTime away. So next question is from Instagram. Are you planning on working or does childcare not allow? Yes, I am planning on working. Currently, I am applying for jobs. If I'm being completely honest, I have been unsuccessful on quite a few that I was pretty confident that I would have got. 
that's me all over. Literally put the lottery on once and then wonder why I'm not winning. But I really did feel like I was a strong candidate and I was quite surprised and a little bit shocked when I found out I've been unsuccessful. So yes, it's quite a lengthy process actually. I know it's very hard just now to find work, but I am still applying. I am looking for part-time, which also does make it quite difficult. And the reason for that is that we are hoping to have Ren in daycare as well. He's gonna to be too soon and I just think daycare is what he is needing right now. Ideally, I'd like to get him in a couple of days. However, that then means that we need to have that second income. Childcare here is extortionate. Again, I will link another video for you if you haven't yet watched it, just kind of detailing childcare, how it all works um, with regards to subsidy and anything that you may be entitled to. But yes, financially, it's very hard. Clearly, off the top of my head, for both of our kids to go in for, say, three days a week, we are really looking at $49,000 per year. Um, it's not cheap here, it's something that really did shock me. I mean, I knew childcare was going to be expensive. It's a really good website. I will link it down below as well as here. And you can put your rough area that you're looking at going to. If you know your suburb even better, type it in and it will give you the average cost of daycare in that area. And that can really help you just to kind of budget um, if you are looking at coming out. But yes, in terms of working it really depends on how you feel mentally right now I'm probably more in a place where I would like to work I'd like to be more integrated I'd like to meet more people and I just think it would be good for both me and the kids it's good to have that time away and yeah like to do something that you enjoy as well would just be great so I am currently looking watch this space hopefully I can give you more information more positive information soon but Yes, to answer that question, I would like to work, however, until I can find a job, Ren needs to stay out of daycare because we can't afford it. So, only another couple of questions left. My next one is actually from TikTok, I'm sure. Oh no, now I've lost it. However, I can remember it. It was around why we had chose Australia, the other side of the world, when we could, there's so many more places closer to home that we could have chose. So it was more so on the fact of lifestyle. So again, going straight back to the beginning, I was actually very keen on Canada and Ewan had kind of had an interest in Australia. So we looked at both of them individually, looked at various things from cost of living to childcare, education, work, all those kind of things. And Australia just ticked more of the boxes for us. Obviously as well, the culture is very similar to kind of to the UK, obviously driving the same side of the road, speak the same language. And one of the things I actually quite like about here as well is that Australians and the Scottish, I feel like we are very similar. We have the same kind of, like, the only word I can think of is banter. I don't even know if that's a word that's used in um, Australia. But yeah, we have that same like kind of sarcastic tone. Don't really take life too seriously. And I just really like that. You know, I, I think it's a good... I think it's a good mindset and good way to be, but Australia definitely has that. Obviously, you and being able to get a, a visa, a sponsorship visa, was a massive tick for us as well. And then finally, having that relocation package for us, that was it, you know, kind of secured for us. Um, we didn't really then look at anywhere else. And I was very excited. I was really looking for that kind of beach lifestyle. So why would you not move to Australia? It literally has the most amazing beaches ever. So yeah, that's why we thought, let's go for Australia then, and then let's just give it a shot. If it doesn't work, then we can always try somewhere else. The world is huge, and it's not going anywhere. I have lots of different kind of friends and acquaintances that work and live in various places of the world, and all seem to be doing it very well. So if something doesn't work, I do believe that it's not just a case of giving up. You just try somewhere else, until you find somewhere that you really feel like you could call home. So... Yeah, that's hopefully that answers that question. Then the very last question, which was from YouTube, is what do you miss other than family? So, I wrote a list. And so the very first one I've already touched upon, but it is the fashion. Next one is European city breaks. Um, I, I really miss them. I was such a kind of like 
city traveller, me and Ewan used to go on a lot of city breaks and you always picked up really cheap flights or like little cheap weekends away and I really enjoyed that whereas I feel like Australia is so big um, that you tend to just travel around more within your state, obviously you can go to other states as well but just for example, Perth is a five hour flight from us and I think until you are really here and living here you don't really appreciate just how big Australia is. Saying that, we have been to some gorgeous areas and we've only been here obviously less than a year but we have been to some amazing places and we will be going to a lot more, don't get me wrong, but I just miss those European city breaks and also like holidays, like resort holidays. I really, really miss them, which sounds ridiculous because I live in Australia with the beach on my doorstep. But you know, when you're just packing for your two week holiday and you've got all your nice outfits, you get on the flight, you get there, you get your cocktails, your dinner made, you're just, for two weeks, you just like completely turn off and you're in this like five star resort. Yeah, like I, I just miss that. However, I have had a look at a few resorts here. Now, albeit we would be driving to them, but I think we're going to book them. So again, watch a space and I'll see how that kind of compares. If I feel like I'm in holiday mode or I feel like I'm just still in Australia. <laughs> we do have a holiday booked. Um, and if you're coming to Sydney, um, I know that Fiji and Bali are very, very popular. And doing a quick search online, very affordable as well. So that's probably somewhere in the future that we will go. This year we are doing a cruise and I'm excited for that. I love cruising and we're getting to see other areas of Australia as well. So that's also something to look forward to. But yes, definitely miss European city breaks. Then my next one is Edinburgh. Miss it so much. I've always loved Edinburgh. Probably my favourite city in the world. And do you know what I miss the most is the old buildings, the history, just everything about Edinburgh. I just really, really love it. Then the next thing is cold water. Um, the taps here just give out lukewarm water that's really bubbly and just doesn't hit home literally the same way as Scottish water does. Um, me and Ewan have said multiple times how much we miss running the tap back home and it being ice cold and I was a massive fan of Scottish water, just tastes so good. So that's what I want to miss, um, then said it before, I'll say it again, prong cocktail crisps. I miss them so much and I'm so annoyed at myself because we've had family over and literally my mother-in-law was like anything you need and I was like no I think I asked for jammies something else I can't remember and I completely forgot about prawn cocktail crisps <sighs> I really miss them somebody had commented on my last video saying you get them in every shop you need to go or go somewhere to like an Asian um, like market no that's completely different prawn crackers and prawn cocktail crisps are two completely different things not even similar, not even similar and it has to be Walker's Prawn Cocktail or Golden Wonder Prawn Cocktail, you don't get them here and also I'm not paying five dollars in some British shop in the city, I'm not doing it, I just need to miss them. And the very last one, um, what do I miss about being at home? No flies, there are so many flies here, drive me mental, it's ten times worse here in the central coast, we have fly things, we have a fly swap, we have so many anti-fly things and they still manage to get in and annoy me so much. We are constantly <laughs> chasing a fly around this house. I hate them so much, I really do. And I think they're coming in literally the tiniest little gaps. Um, always when I'm cooking and just highly annoying, just highly annoying. So again, I really miss being at home and I have the fly going around my face, but I will take the flies, I will take them to live here, it's okay. So I'm going to close the video off here because I feel like it's quite a lengthy one and I don't want to lose anyone's attention. If there's any other questions that you think would be good to know about then leave them below and I can happily do another vlog video on them. I can also try and answer some of them in some of my other vlogs that I have coming up. The next videos I plan on doing are obviously spend a weekend with us. Um, so much to do here and I'm so keen to show it off to everyone and I know a lot of people are are very keen to move to the central coast actually which yes great choice you are going to love it here I think that will potentially be my next one I am still going to do a house tour I'm just waiting on a few things getting built <clears throat> you in <laughs> I've just moaned about it on these long hours and now I'm like 
why is the flat pack furniture not getting built? But again, any other video requests, I would love to hear them. Sometimes I find I'm not too sure what everyone wants to see, so leave them below and I'll see you all next time.